got the wine and you got the beer. <laughs> of course. I think we should caveat this with saying for people who are listening or watching, we are in fact related. Right. Though I'm Welsh and you're Argentinian. And you're ugly. Yeah, we're cousins. I'm not ugly. Um, so let's go on. We're just waffling rubbish here. Thank you for your time. And uh, I'm and no, this is an interesting topic. This because I, uh, I have not given it any depth of thought, really, apart from to argue with you in the past just to wind you up. Yeah, but it's uh, but it is an interesting topic and one I would like to learn more about. So we're we're going to be discussing, um, brought well, probably probably all of the above. Things that you studied in the past, namely, um, and and ho- and have a, a very you have a very good understanding of it, I think, um, and uh, and are the the knowledge in this case, as opposed to myself, it's a rarity, it's a rarity. Yeah. So we can studied, agree on that. You studied two things that interested me. Two things. <clears throat> yeah. Feminist theory, mm-hmm. right? Whatever that is, I didn't know you studied that, but now it interests me until, until you said it before this before the start of this podcast. And you studied gender, what, you know, what, gender, gender, gender studies as well. Well, to be fair, I've told you this seven years ago, <laughs> not before we started this podcast. <laughs> you just forget. <laughs> yeah, I do forget. Right, explain to me. Breaking news, yeah. Explain, explain to me what the study of feminist theory is. I've never heard of that before. Well, well, you wouldn't because you're not at uni, right? And you haven't been either. And even if you were at uni and if you weren't doing anything related to humanities, you wouldn't know about it either, or you wouldn't think it's important, basically. So within the humanities, there's different branches, obviously, and you need to analyze different things, whether it's literature, whether it's religion, whatever it is that you want to study or analyze. Um, some of those theories are called feminist because of what they study and how they started and their aims, basically. Give me an example of a feminist. Uh, give me an example of something. So you probably heard, I don't know if you would hear that in school, but you probably heard of first wave feminism, second wave feminism, third I've heard wave. Of it. Yeah. Like um, there's different schools, um, obviously different places in the world where this happened. Um, so basically, depending on the moment in history and depending on the topics, there's different types. So the one I study, or the one I studied, is difficult to to categorize it. Uh, You could say feminism or something like that. And then you've got queer studies, which obviously is about queer and not just feminism. So, when you say postmodern, Ilu, what do you mean postmodern? I've heard that before. I don't really understand what it means. Which which period is that relating to? So it depends on how you look at it. So basically, you can think of history in periods, right? So um, you could say, I mean, you could say after the twentieth century, right? Uh, you got modernism and then postmodernism, uh, but it's not a question of years. It's not a question of eras. It's more of a question of theories. So how you see things. So you could say that uh, postmodern feminism would view gender as performative and would disregard essentialism. So it's not a question of years, basically, more a question of theories and beliefs let's say so what what's what do you mean performative viewing it as performative so um so performative the idea of gender being performative 
stems from the studies of Judith Butler, who is a theorist, and um, she wrote a book called Gender Trouble, which was well, a seminal work within uh, feminism. So she understands gender as a performance. So she, so it's the opposite to essentialism. So essentialism would say that um, essence is prior to existence. Whether perform, seeing things as performative means that we make them real by performing them. So she believes that we act in different ways because of our social, because of our society our, and our ideas. And, but reinforce or create reality, if that makes sense. Yeah, so we perform I think, gender. Yeah, so if I understand this correctly, to put it in, different, in a different way, um, it's, it's, it's what causes you to be who you are. Either your actions, which are, which are, like a you know, my actions, what I, the way I'm with my hand now, the way I talk, the way I carry myself, they're a product of my environment, partly like partly my genetics, but product of my environment and how I've grown up, my experiences, um, and that, so so that defines so that defines who I am, predominantly environment in this in this example. Then essentialism is where. You, who you are is defined by what you feel. So, no, I mean, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not. I give it my best shot. <laughs> it's not. We can think of let's let's think of gender because it's it's easier maybe to use as an example. For example, the whole idea as well. One of the main theorists um, that has a lot to do with this is Foucault. I've mentioned to you before, um, a French um, theorist. So, F O U C A U L B. Okay. Um, you're asking me too many questions. I wasn't. I wasn't prepared for this. I'll stop, I'll stop talking. Um, pardon? I'll stop talking. Go on. No, no, that's fine. Uh, but it's just it's it's really difficult to explain in brief, basically. So basically, Foucault studies how knowledge and power are used to control people, okay, through the use of institutions, okay, uh, in terms of society. So he, all of that, right? He has this idea of discourse. Okay, where he says that discourse and even language is not just there to describe the world, but actually it creates the world. So it creates our reality. These are everything is bound by different powers, right, and different authorities, and then we describe that. So by saying things, we are creating things. Okay, so I think that relates to Butler in the sense that she would say the same about gender. So we're not born with a gender, but we perform that gender since the moment we we're born, right? And by enacting it, we make it real. So the example she uses as well, which can be helpful me maybe to understand, is theater. So the dominant discourse would be the script, right? And we are all the actors. So by carrying out, by, by doing that every day, carrying out those roles and enacting these dominant discourses, we make them real and we make them true. That's how she also identifies there the, the possibility of transgression, the possibility to change these things because they're not a given. They're not biological. They're not there. They're not inherent or inherent. Right? Okay. Inherent. They're created by us. So I don't know if that helped at all. Yeah, that no, does help. So, I mean, this leads us, let's, I mean, let's just dive straight into the 
um, the idea of gender being a social construct. Then this is what this is what we're coming on to here now. And you were you were of the belief <laughs> that what? Why did you laugh at that? Because it's not. Well, yeah, okay. I'm. I'm it makes it it makes no, it you, tough no, religion. Me, I mean, <laughs> no, 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 no. But based on based on like w what you've studied, what you've read, your experiences, yada yada yada. Okay. Yeah. You believe that gender is a social construct and that is the idea of of acting uh, in in like a, a man or a boy or acting like a woman or a girl people do that because because of a society it's a social construct it's nothing to do with the fact that they are physiologically sexually male or female yeah so i don't believe anatomy defines gender you don't believe what anatomy or your biology your your body defines your gender I, I struggle with this idea as you know right i struggle with this idea because for me to say that there are let's go back there are things that we do this is the way i see it and again i'm not this is i just i want to hear your i want to hear what you think on on the whole thing obviously so there are things that we do that I can that are, are, are proven like not to be that are gender related, but proven not to be social construct. So the genetic things, like um, if you if if you have a, a mother, uh, a, a woman, right, and uh, the woman gives birth, yeah, and then uh, and and let's say it's I don't know hundred years ago, you got no social media. They've never never been around. They've never been around another woman in, that they can remember. Giving birth, apart from their mother, yeah. Yeah. They, they've never seen someone breastfeed. They never, they never, they never watched a TV program. They don't know. They don't know what the breasts are for, right? They don't know. How would they know if they if they have never experienced anyone else breastfeeding, for example? But mother will instinctively breastfeed the baby. Mm -hmm. That's not a social construct, is it? So it depends. I mean. Everything. I would, my answer to everything is it depends. But what <laughs> I'm, what I'm. So you're talking about instinct, right? Um, you could say natural instinct. Natural is a, is a dangerous. It's a, it's a it's a complex word to use when we're talking about gender, because um, it has been used to attack people, right? To so say you're natural. You're doing this wrong. You're so it's not it's not a word I like to use at all. But whenever I'm speaking about this, people like you um, will resort to nature to counter argue whatever I'm saying. So if we're talking about nature, we're talking about something totally different. Here we're talking about us. We're talking about society, and then people go, "Well, but what about breastfeeding? What about those animals who and take care of the?" What about all those things that we see in nature, right? Gender, mostly in our reality, not in animals, in our, um, in our life. Gender carries political, economic, uh, different aspects, different things um, that accompany that idea of gender. So when I'm saying gender, I'm not saying a woman breastfeeding. I'm saying a woman performing certain roles. And men certain roles and which result in a male dominance in the society. Okay. So if we think of sorry, yeah, go on. Oh, you go on. So if we think of um Gender is always associated with, uh, it's always associated to sex, right? And talking about feminist theories, in the past, in the beginning, the older uh, theories would distinguish between sex being your biology or your anatomy and gender being the assigned social role, okay? But that, again, is something quite modern, let's say, because if you analyze how sex was seen at the beginning of humanity, if you, if you like, um, in ancient Greece, 
for example, or in ancient Rome. Sex was seen, so male and women were seen as two different versions of the same sex. So there was only one sex, right? And male and female would be different versions of the same sex. So they were seen like that. So they would see, if we talk about genitals, they would say that the female would have the inverted uh, penis or the clitoris would be the penis, etc. cetera. Um, so different ideas about genitals, different ideas about sex. So to me, I think whenever we think of, it's really hard to explain that in, in, in a short time. So... You've got ages. Take your time. Take your time. No, I know, but it's just it's hard to explain it as well um, without a certain foundation, let's say. Um, Calling me stupid there. No, no, not at all. It's just people, <laughs> people, I'm sure if someone listens to this, they'll, most of them will be agreeing with you. Um, so I haven't said anything. I haven't given an opinion yet. Well, you can't. No, I mean, it's not an opinion. It's not quite. It's, that's the thing. I think what we need to understand is that these conversations or these discussions are not uh, an argument. And it's not a question of who's right and who's wrong. I don't believe that at all. So, whenever we had conversations about this, um, most of the time we would disagree and we never fell out with each other or none of us felt offended or anything. I think that's important for people to understand that. The problem here is that sex and gender are closely tied to power, whether we understand it or not, whether we accept it or not. So when people start breaking with the norm, with the binary opposition of male and female, people get pissed off. So that's why I'm not going to name... Uh, celebrities or anything, but that's how you see people tweeting, you know, oh, I identify as a window, ha ha ha, I identify as a giraffe, and people <sighs> get annoyed as if it's a personal attack. There's something, and this is analyzed by Foucault, excellent, obviously. Um, there's a moment in history where we decided that our deepest truth was defined by our sex, by our sexuality. And after that, sex has been used as a tool and as a media to control people. Yeah, I, I, I look, sex, gender, um, they are one of the, they are, I don't see them as tools. Um, I don't see them as tools that are used to control people. I see them as, um, I see them as, as, um, not values. They are uh, they are not factors. They, they are attributes of a person, of people, of society, of the, of the human race, right? Of flipping animals, yeah. Yeah. And and they and those attributes are targeted to 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 for, for power. I understand that financial power, whatever, whatever it can be, right? Control of the masses, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I understand that. Um. Uh. What I when we were when we were going we got just going back and, and you were talking about um, that uh, we, we when we were talking we were talking about gender you were talking about social you were talking about gender and social construct and he said that the that gender has been basically created as as a social construct is created by society but I don't see it like that okay I see it that. Um, at the start of evolution of our evolution, so as in Homo sapien, right? Yeah. Because of our our sex, male and female, or mm -hmm. yeah, we'd call it that, sex, male and female. Yeah. Because of the because of the differences in in the in the two sexes, uh, and I'm talking predominantly of physio, uh, like physical differences and and physical abilities. Uh, the a male being uh, physically stronger than a female, uh, generally speaking. A female uh, being able to give birth, uh, as a, and a male not being able to give birth, and so those two things they they dictate straight away individual behaviors. And as evolution has gone on, they dictate um, tribal behaviors, and, and, and where we're at now, they dictate behaviors that have to happen. 
for for uh, for us to for a, a species to survive, that is, protect the, uh, you know, look after the the, the, the people who are able to reproduce, i.e., women, yeah, um, provide for them, provide for, provide for the tribe, whatever, make sure you can get food and get water, stay safe, and blah blah blah. And so on t on that, and this is just the way as we're talking, I I'm seeing it. So as that's gone on, evolution's gone on. All of these other attributes that we have, that we now have in in the postmodern era, I just learned that term about ten minutes ago. Uh, <laughs> that we have now, they are yeah. not. I, I, I perhaps they are not. Um, they are not things that have been that have come about because of the desire for power and control over people. They are things that have come about just as add-ons. Um, new manifest manifestations, additional attributes that have grown from the original, original um, male and female, without having any ability to even speak. Yeah, okay. the thing is, what's interesting, I think, for these things, for example, if this were a lecture, right? I would ask you, fine, that's great. What are your sources? What am I what? Sources. Okay. Who have you, I mean, like, you are talking about what you believe. That's absolutely fine. I mean, that's, that's what I'm doing as well. But I'm kind of basing what I believe in, in, in studies and research, right? Whereas you're saying, yeah, but you're saying the tribes, right? And fine. Yeah. You've seen loads of movies on it. You probably read it. You read about it in primary school. But apart from that, what other research do you have no, on the creation I, or the assignment of gender roles? I'm, this, isn't, this, is, this isn't a battle of I, Lou, and Hugh. This is, that's what I'm thinking. I want to hear your input on that. Right. Want to, like what, so it, what is, from, from what you know and understand, what what is what is different or wrong or incorrect of what I'm what? saying? That's why I'm just. No, I'm, no, I'm not saying it's incorrect. I'm saying that idea that you have stems comes from somewhere, right? And that somewhere is a dominant ideology that just goes about floats around everyone. And you would have you said this, and I agree with what you said, okay? And everyone else will agree with what you said. But I'm wondering, where did we get that information? How do we actually know that, uh, yeah, there are records from that time, but how we read them? I didn't read it first, directly read. No, them. but I think I, I think on it, I mean, I, like, you can't read, it's very difficult, it would be very difficult for either of us to argue against, like, uh, what not document or what the research says happened at the dawn of evolution or the dawn of oh, but there's loads there is loads and, and and so yeah and so you can cut all cut out all the middle you come you can come to where we are now my experience here i just um because it would be such a difficult thing to um to deliberately well it can't have been deliberate to bring about the, the, the gender idea i i just i i just I, I just can't, I just struggle to see how it can be entirely down to, or not entirely, predominantly down to um, the, the, the evolution of control and power in people and that desire that gender has come about. I, I yeah. just can't, I can't see how that would be the case and it wouldn't be the case that it, it's predominantly down to um, the attributes of male and female. Yeah, so... Thinking about, I mean, history, right? As going back to the example I was given earlier, like ancient Greece, for example, right? Um, there's, there is, there are loads of works that date from uh, periods in history which are loads of years um, old, let's say, right? And this idea of uh, female submission. A few, or the, the male is active and the female is passive, appear really early in history, right? But I think the moment when it's, let's say, institutionalized would be 
in the 19th century, right? That goes together with the Industrial Revolution, um, urbanization, the emergence of the middle class, right? And the, the new model. And with that middle class, there's this uh, binary between the private and the public sphere. So for families to work, for, for the system to work, right? People had to get married, have children, and the men would be the ones who would dominate the public sphere, go to work, get the money, and the women will um, occupy the private sphere, take care of the children. It's exactly what you said, but I would say that that's a good example of the 19th century and is very much related to the Industrial Revolution and the way our economy was shifting. I wouldn't have gone back to the tribes because when you actually read about pre-colonial eras, the, 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 the information there is very, very different. So if you look at uh, different indigenous people, uh, peoples, um, they have very different ideas of gender and nothing to do with the ideas that we have now. So there's this other um, theorist called Maria Lugones, and she writes about decolonial feminism. And she compares the term or the concept of race to gender, right? And she says that gender was also a colonial imposition, the same as race. So this idea that obviously the indigenous people didn't know they were another race until a white guy got off a ship, uh, got out of the ship, right, and said, "Well, hi, we are white. You are, I don't know, inferior, whatever it is." When they imposed that society on them, they also imposed their their views and their perceptions around gender. So that's why I think what you said is very interesting because actually, if you look at the research on anything pre-historical, let's say, anything from the tribes, as you said, all the data that is there, or at least the one that I have accessed, has nothing to do with what you said. So how do they yeah. function then? How, just give me an example of one of those tribes, if you can remember. How, how, does, how do they... What is what is what is something must be critically like significantly different to the way they function as a society to us if they don't recognize gender differences. Yeah, it's not that they don't recognize them. I mean, obviously, I can't give you a, a good example right now because I honestly didn't think we were going. But um, <laughs> I would need to to check, but. It's not the, the 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 problem is or or the interesting bit is that when I'm saying this, you cannot even think of another system. It's like so how do how do how and that's the way everyone thinks, you know? It's difficult for us to think of something uh, else because this has been going on for ages. I mean so, well look uh, is it is it I, no, I, I see what you're saying. I mean, you, we can, I've not read anything like that, but I can imagine, like, so let's say I can imagine, I don't know, let's say flipping Eskimos or Inuits or some, tr not Eskimos, don't want to, let's make it, let's make a race up. Let's make it, let's make a tribe, not a race. Let's make a tribe. <laughs> uh, it's called uh, the HR tribe, right? And they live in the deepest, darkest depths of uh, South Wales in a valley no one's ever discovered, right? And then, yeah. <laughs> And they, the way they do things is male and female, so men and women, or or all the people, they've all, so they haven't got male and female. Everyone's a member of the tribe. They've all got like uh, non-gender specific names. Okay, I don't know why I said in that voice, because it, it was a Mick taking voice. Go for that. <laughs> right. Men and women have to do this. Sorry, everyone in the tribe has to do the same thing. They, are, they, they need to get wood into the fires. They need to go and hunt animals. They need to keep uh, the boys from crying and going and robbing their, their uh, <laughs> <everything. laughs> yeah, Pretend, right. However, there are things that you absolutely there are things that absolutely 
um, drive a wedge between two types of that society and which define the way they go about things and do things at certain times. So let's take pregnancy, for example. Okay. There's going to be, so one of the members of the tribe is pregnant. All right. And it only seems to happen with the, with the members of the tribe who've got um, reproductive organs. Um, and so that member of the tribe, anyone with anyone in that member of the tribe, you know that they're going to be out of action for, um, they're going to become less productive in whatever they need to do, tree, tree chopping, flipping, hunting, for nine months of the year. And then after that nine months is up approximately, they're going to be, they're going to be out of action due to recovery from giving birth for maybe a day, to maybe flipping weeks, maybe months, you know, recover. And so they don't have gender, but there's apps. It's just because they don't call it. it right. And they're, just... but they're absolutely defining things that, in, that, that separate male from female. You can't change. Like I don't see. So uh, bringing that into now, you know, in today's world, where we are, uh, we it's all like there's a big drive on, and, and rightly so. Um, uh, gender, they call it gender. They call it gender equality. Gender equality, you know, um, all revolving originally around. Um, well, I say originally, when we're talking about pay, re revolving around women in some roles getting paid less than the male counterparts doing the same thing. Okay, but yeah, one example. Yeah, one example, right? And uh, and 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 that's grown into this whole this idea, unachievable, I think, idea of gender equality. Women are treated exactly the same as men. Not possible. Not possible. It's not possible either way. Men can't get treated the same as women. Women can't get treated the same the same as men. men. Why should men be entitled to? Um, why should men be entitled to? Um, well, when a woman gets pregnant. And, as, and, and, and goes Can you think of another question that doesn't involve no. pregnancy? Another no. example. <laughs> no, but it's it's the obvious one. It's the obvious one. It's the obvious example. It's it's a physiological attribute that you have, if even physiological is the right word, that that yeah. one of the genders has. A blessing, some might say. It is a blessing. Well, we wouldn't be here talking. But you see my point. We can go as far as we want towards gender equality. It's, they've, it, it's been made unachievable because I think the aspirations people see is women actually getting treated the same. Well, no, not women getting treated the same as men, but men and women getting treated equally, right? Not possible. Not possible. Women have some so perks. That can men I just have. interrupt you two seconds? No, I think... I'm, the, I'm the expert. No. Well, I mean, none of us are. <laughs> but I think. What you're understanding, so you are confusing, I think, equality with being absolutely the same. Equality, have you heard of the term equality of outcome? Yeah. Right. So Equality of opportunity. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking, for example, when we speak about that in terms of students, when we talk about assessments, right, we're talking about giving everyone the same opportunities and the same chance to achieve the same results. I think that's where the problem of equality comes in. Women, historically, whether you like it or not, have not be, been given that same chance, running chance that I, male have had. I, I agree with you. Why would I not have liked that? I agree with you. I agree with you. It's, it's very, very useful to think about these categories by, so for example, of gender, by comparing it to race, okay? okay? So you just said you don't think that women and men can ever be equal. Can you say the same about white people and black people? Uh, yeah. No, 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 I can't. No, I can't. Um, and would you would you agree that white people and black people are equal? Hang on, so hang on. So if we're talking about we're, to, we're talking when we're talking about like men and women being equal, okay? Mm -hmm. um, we mean in when they are in in, in the same uh, the, the men and women. So a case that would be a man and a woman who live in the same area, same society, same. same how um, how often does that happen? 
Well, you got well flipping half and half in the population of the UK. There's loads of us living in the UK, all live in the UK. Okay, I'll give you another example. Okay, bear with me. Okay. Well, hang on. I hadn't... <laughs> okay. Well, go on. Yeah, finish. No, no, no. Go for it. Go for it. Yeah. So. I was having a very similar conversation with a friend of mine months ago at work, right? And we were talking about uh, racial discrimination, okay? He was saying he doesn't get it because he's not a racist. People, let's say black people, okay? Let's say he doesn't see black people as inferior. He doesn't understand. So I said, well, it's a historical problem. And he goes, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, all years, right? Slavery, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And he goes, yeah, but he's not been a slave. His dad hasn't been a slave. So what's, what's that got to do with anything? So fair enough. The guy might be black and might be third generation British. But you cannot say that because he hasn't been a slave himself or his dad hasn't or his grand hasn't. Oh, he cannot identify religion or racial or offensive. Uh, I what are you talking you about? What I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. I, I, I'm I, trying I, to make it more cle no, clear, would, but it's not working. I would. I would never say that. To, I would never say that to a guest. It wasn't relative. <laughs> I just realised I never talked like this to guests. What are you talking about? <laughs> No, I didn't mean it like that. It's just because it's you. You know, we have, we have, we have, uh, we have, <laughs> we have good discussions. I didn't mean to come across like that. My point like, was, so... he couldn't understand why a person who is black yeah. ha had been offended by racial slur, right? Ah. When he had suffered it firsthand and his family hadn't, anyway. What, what was the situation? Does that have interest? So, what, he got, he got called a bad name or something? No, it wasn't even him. It wasn't even directed at him. It was directed at that community, let's say. Oh, someone said the N-word towards that community. This guy heard it. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It wasn't that bad. But anyways, my point is, you're saying, well, this woman who's born in Britain and has the same opportunities, like you could say you and your sister, right? You would say, would you consider that you and your sister had the same possibilities? And no, the same absolutely, life? no, absolutely not. And I, 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 absolutely not. It's inter This is interesting. Like this is interesting line going on here because we we're now talking about discrimination. Yeah, which is what happens what? to women. Yeah, but nobody it gets it. But it it happens to men too. It happens to men. Hang on, hang on. It happens to Hashtag men, not women. all man, not all men. <laughs> No, but I know what you're saying, okay. Now, what's important is that, <clears throat> what is vitally important is where we're talking about women and where we're talking about um, black black people, okay, or people who aren't white, because it's never, like... Yeah, they needn't what. be black, yeah. Yeah. Um, so when we're talking about that, what's important? So what's... In, what's, in, what's So to add to context for what I'm saying, you know, I'm talking about discrimination. There are ways, that, so we have to discriminate against people. And when I say we, I mean I. I have to, as a survival mechanism, discriminate. I have yeah. to do it. The same as you have to do it. Same as my daughters have to do it. Same as my girlfriend has to do it. We have to do it. That is an evolutionary trait. Okay. Yeah. I see someone. I see someone. I'm a caveman, and I see another cave, and I'm looking after my missus because she's pregnant in the in the in that valley that's not being found in South Wales, right? I mean, and, what would she do without you? <laughs> what would she do? And she, Eaten by a bear. <laughs> and she, and uh, and I see another caveman coming mm -hmm. towards me, and he's bigger than me, or whatever, and he's got a, a club in his hand, and he doesn't look at me. He looks angry. So I straight away discriminate against him. I, on his appearance, I decide this isn't a good situation. I don't like that person. I either bug out or I go and attack it. Yeah, that's the so when people say we need to get rid of discrimination, it's not possible. What is really important is going all these years down the line, 
there is discrimination that happens. And correct me if uh, no, I'm one of you. What you're saying because I'm 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 taking over here, but I don't mean to do it. It's just I I feel really strong about this stuff. It's like we need to define what is acceptable discrimination, what is not. It's not possible to get complete rid of discrimination. And so the examples of discrimination that happen now that are based on um, the ways that we conducted ourselves, I mean, Britain or America or whoever, in the past, like slavery for black people, yeah, yeah. like, yeah, like, um, like, like taking the whole women are inferior to men thing on a few 2,000 years too far, yeah, to the point they don't get a vote, yeah, and there's still follow on discrimination that happens, okay, based on that stuff. Um, which isn't necessarily racism, for example, to the, to the, the black people point. It's not necessarily racism on the part of the individual. It may have been. It may have been the result of the the the, the it manifests it now. The growth of it may have been the result of slavery in the past, but not now. I give an ex- I mean, I give an example of um, of discrimination, which which I do now. And I'm quite happy to say I think I've mentioned it in the past, but maybe. Based on completely inaccurate information, so I get it's the it's and it's uh, and it's where I've been brought up. Um, what well, I don't mean my parents, I mean just the way I've grown up, my experiences. And that example is I'm walking. There's there's two parallel universes, okay, there's, and I'm in the same place in each one. I'm walking down an alleyway. I'm in London, okay, and it's now, and I'm walking down an alleyway in London, right? Walked on that alleyway in one universe. I walked on that alleyway. And there's no one else in the alleyway. It's night time. Okay, I've just finished a late meeting. And there's a guy walking up the alleyway towards me. He's dressed in a suit. He's got white skin. He's carrying a briefcase. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't think twice. That I think mm, he's out a bit late. Uh, probably didn't the same thing I was working late. Yeah. In the parallel other universe, okay, I'm walking down the same alleyway, and a kid, I say a kid, a person of younger age who's got black skin. I can see his hands, and he's got a hood up. Comes walking up the alleyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't just pass that off in my head. I think I'm in a dark alleyway. And that, that that I see that person as a potential threat, and I give him a wider berth than I would have the well, so... white business worker. That's discrimination. That's not based on I don't like black people, and I think black people are all kind of flipping killers. It's not based on that. What it's that based is based on. on Oh, well, well, I will tell you. What that is based on is, in my head, like now, in my head, so we like talk about London, in my head, the way I see it, the way I understand it, and I, again, I'm having this, it could be completely wrong, but it's the, the way I understand it, um, is that uh, violent, violent crime, violent gang crime in London is predominantly not white people conducted by predominantly not white people. The most violent gangs are predominantly not white people. Now, I'm not saying black. I'm not saying Caribbean. I'm not saying flipping um, from Cameroon. But you see my point. It's it that I'm not a racist person, and but that discrimination is not born out of racism. It's based on like crime statistics that are floating around my head from the past, conversations with my friends who, who live and work in London. Um, it's based on that. Yeah, discourses. Okay, so it may be right or wrong. I think, going back, the discrimination side for, on the women and men and, the, and, the, and, and race, there are absolutely elements of discrimination that happen that shouldn't happen. Um, and those are the ones we need to stamp out. But it's very hard to identify them separate them from the stuff that just needs to exist. Go on. Yeah, so who would make those decisions? I mean, who would be the the god deciding this ne- needs to exist? This well, the doesn't. Femi- the, the feminine theorists. Exactly. <laughs> Amen. No, I mean, that's, that's the thing. I think what you're doing is, so what you're doing, and again, this is not ta- an attack, you um what you is i was speaking about discrimination in terms of equality so 
The same example that you gave about the guy walking down the alley, right? The same thing happens in a, let's say, job interview, for example, right? Or it could happen, okay? So in terms of numbers, in, in terms of data, we know that um, our society has always favored white people and specifically white men right that's why we now have laws against this right that's why now we have this diversity policy in every company in everything because people like you let's say have tried to stop this by saying don't do this this is bad we should love everyone and accept everyone it's just not happening so they're trying to enforce it through policies laws etc the fact that we need a policy for that is just a it's just a representation of the big issue that this represents in our society. You look confused again. No, I no, I'm not. I, I'm not confused. I I I I I see what you're saying. Again, just to go back, you know, when you said you don't want it to sound like an attack on me, I. I'm I'm not here to go. This is my views. This is what I believe, and you try and prove me wrong. I'm like you. No. This, is, this is a discussion, all right? An open book. I'm I am. We I think we are one of the few people on the planet, <laughs> in the in the in the in the first world planet that are, are accepting of being able to change our minds if you want to, even on even on critical things. You know. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a good it's a good point that you mentioned the first world, right? Um, I think some of these issues, gender issues, are more obvious in different societies. So, for example, in my um, in my country, for example, right? The problem is, I wouldn't say it's bigger, uh, gender inequality, let's say. I wouldn't say it's bigger, but it's more obvious, right? Not that it's not big in Britain, but still. Um, in Argentina, back in... I don't want to say a wrong year, but back in the 2000s, I would say from five to 10, I think, we, they, parliament or whatever you want to call it, came up with a um, new law, which was called, or a new, it's very difficult to speak about this in English, a new term within the legislation, which was femicide. Okay, so it's a it's a homicide, but it's of a woman. So a femicide is a person who is a female and was killed because of her condition of female. That's what the the law says. To explain, we have so many deaths in Argentina every day that they had to come up with a new legislation for it, especially for it, because of the amount of women who die killed by their partners most of the times or by other men daily. Yeah, but that's yeah, but they're not killed because they're that's a woman. wrong. You're gonna say but you're gonna say that is wrong. Normal people or good people don't do that. Yes, absolutely. But it's not that this these people wake up one morning and go, oh, I'm going to be a misogynist. Oh, no, I'm no, going to no. hate women. It's not like that. It's a system, right, which, which has a lot of effects, right, and reflects itself in many different ways. And one of the worst effects of that system, the hetero heteropatriarchal system, one of its worst effects is the killing of women or what is called femicide. So or misogyny, right? So it's not the person says, oh you're a woman. Oh you've got this gen this these genitals, so I hate you. No. It's the system and that we live in allows a person to start to hate a woman because of her condition of woman because maybe she doesn't fulfill the expectations that he had in his mind that a woman should that's not that's not uh it's not down to the society to, to, it's not down to society to to no 
to say that it's caused by society, that that's caused by society, I, I can't see how that's the case because that would be, it would seem to be a, a, a way to suicide yourself, for a society to suicide itself, to, to produce an environment where um, one sex or the other is, is acceptable to, or not acceptable. Because obviously it's not, because it gets sent to jail as an act for it, right? But yeah. that it's encouraged somehow to to kill him. It's not that it's, think... it's not a question of encouraging. It's a question of numbers. So it's not that the system goes and encourages people, and the president comes on TV every day saying, "Let's kill women." No, or nobody does that from any institution. In fact, they're trying to do the opposite now. But it's um, it's the idea that. I don't want to say a number, right? I invite you and everyone uh, to read about this, okay? Um, the, the number, not only in Argentina, but mainly in South America, the numbers of femicides. And the numbers are absolutely crazy. So there is a reason why... While you're talking, I'm going to look right getting killed. Femicide. While you're talking, I'm looking right there. Femicide. Femicide. Um, here's a question for you, just while I'm looking. Okay, so we... So while like, you're not uh, listening. <laughs> no. Uh, we all know you can't multitask. <laughs> femicide, right. Here's a question for you. Um, and this is one that has been buzzing around my head for a while. Um, actually started buzzing around my head when uh, due to race, r racial stuff in America. Um, last couple of years, and and, re and more recently, it's started in the UK. Yeah. We're talking here about improving society and, and making things more equal for people, equality of opportunity, and not equality of outcome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, everyone should have the same opportunity, but to give everyone the same outcome, like you can all earn thirty thousand pounds a year, or you can all have the mega job, or you can all have the fast car. It doesn't, it doesn't it's just not. You know, that's a different topic of conversation altogether. But let's take the racial discrimination getting rid of racial unfounded racial discrimination get rid of that or get rid of uh, gender discrimination sexual discrimination we start these paths and the governments have years and decades and decades ago fucking hell last century now how do we know we've achieved it what is the point where we go okay mission done Let's stop banging on about it, right? And I, 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 I use that phrase, banging on about it, deliberately. And and the point of making this is, when you start, when you start anything out, you need to know when you've got there and achieved the end. You need to know when you've achieved what you set out to do. So, in terms of America, with the racial discrimination, especially uh, the oppression against black people out there, yeah. um, has been. Well, not just black people, the Indians, like well documented. It's flipping obvious, and uh, it's obvious what 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 had gone on, how bad it was out there and other places. But we're just looking at America at the minute. Now, my 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 um, view of what hap what's happened in America over the last few years is it's gone full circle. It's gone the, uh, the don't oppress black people, Black Lives Matter movement has gone that far down the line. It's actually become a, a race. It's actually become an issue where white people are discriminated against, and white people are now the oppressed. Almost like the start of you could go full circle and be the opposite way around. Because it appears to me we've hit. You've hit like this is the best possible outcome we could have got to in America, but then it's carried on all the way up the slope to where whatever you say. Whatever you do, if it involves a white person and a black person, then it's the white person's at fault and he's racist or she's racist. And the reason I highlight this is it's the same thing over here in terms of gender equality, sexual equality. At what point do we know we achieve what we want to achieve? Is there a point we go, right, here's the evidence that we've got to the best possible point we can get to where women have got the best scenario for equality of opportunity 
no unfounded discrimination. And now we should just, that's it. Just leave it now. Only address it again if it starts going down the pan. No. I think you've got like a need for an all-knowing, perfect God to dictate our lives and tell us how to do things and when to stop. You always come up with something like that. No, I don't think that's possible. I can't, absolutely not. <laughs> like, I don't know. Take up religion here. No, um, I don't think that's abs- I don't think that's possible at all. Right. Um, what, sorry, what's not possible? Ha- have achieve it, get into yeah. that. No, get to that point where we're like, right, it's done. Let's leave it. So, you say that you thought, are you following? You said, when will we know when we get to the point where we can say, right, we've we've reached our aim? That's what you said. Right, so I, I'm saying I don't think that's possible. You were saying that you thought in America, for example, that's what was that is what was happening with um, racial discrimination. You said you thought they were getting to that point, getting rid of it, and that was It's gone. It's gone past. That, it's gone past that point. It's gone past that point. I mean, look, you. you if you're going to set yourself a task, eradicate discrimination against whoever, right? Men, women, black, white, Chinese, fucking whatever, right? If you're going to set yourself that task, if you don't know when you're going to achieve it, the task is unachievable and it never ends. And then when society run away with it, then it becomes a, a completely different beast. A completely different beast. I don't know. I feel like you are um, referring to it as a completely different beast. I think you are focusing on the um, cases where there has been this idea of what you were saying, um, discrimination against white people. I think those are isolated cases. I do still believe that. Even if they are loads, they're still isolated. And I think it would also be I mean, we would need to ask actually a black person or a person from a community in America if they felt that educated whenever you think that was, I don't know, five years ago or two years ago. Because maybe that's not the reality. That's how you are perceiving it on this side of the world, through the media, through your friends or through whatever mean. But I'm, I'm sure it's very, very different to their own reality. It's a good point. It's a good point. Yeah, I think it's a good point. Um, I can pretty much guarantee absolutely it is not the case that racism has been completely eradicated. Racism against black people has been completely eradicated in America. However, uh, um, I think I think looking like that, then it, it should. So the question is not when should you go, yeah, we've done it, knock on the head. It should be when should the, the national campaign against racism be knocked on the head? Then we just focus on the different areas. Because, and the reason I say it is because it, the the problem of racism in America mm-hmm. and what we could be in danger of in the UK, the problem of gender equality in the America, it's not even really a problem anymore. I don't think in 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 the UK, not not on the on the scale it was. If if you keep it, it, it's in danger of perpetuating itself. The more you mention it. It's almost like the media, the, the, by them um, highlighting cases of racism or sexual uh, sexual inequality, where it isn't really the case. It sort of perpetuates the the notion that it's that it still exists. Discrimination still exists on a scale that is a major problem to most of that um, oppressed group, which it isn't the case. Um, according to who? What do you mean? What I think it's still a. I think it's still a very big issue. And what, it still what, affects. What, what is? What is? Both. Both categories: race in, and in gender. UK, in the UK. Inequality. In the UK now. In the UK now. Well, I think that's going to change with the dying out of the generation above us. 
right, significantly. But in the UK now, I knew, if you went to go for a job, okay, um, if you went to go for a job, I, as in with any, now we're not talking small and medium-sized businesses. We're talking like, esta- well, established businesses, which it's not a one-man band, should we say, with yeah. their own, with their own, you know, um, experiences and whatever they've grown up with the parents because the parents are still of the last generation from the you know 20th century you've got to remember our our parents grew up when women couldn't vote you know mm-hmm. so there's still that in society but who would go for a job now i'd argue it, it's highly unlikely that you're going to be discriminated against it because you're a woman unless it involves something manual like manual labor or something like that. so let me say or, something. Oh, go on, go on. You are looking at, again, I think you're looking at equality in terms of rights and in terms of access to stuff, which, as you said, we've progressed a lot as a society, especially in the UK, especially in the first world. When we speak about other countries, it's absolutely different. But if we are focusing on the UK, I can tell you about... Um, a training I've been doing for some months now um, on gender violence, right? Um, gender violence? Um, yeah, gender violence, right? Yep. Yeah, so it's, it's in also... Punching and kicking. Oh, yes. Yep. What did I say? Violence, violence. Stupid Argentinian accent, go on. Exactly. So, um... Gender violence is also um, described as violence against women, right? Lots of people don't like that. The only reason why that is the case is because of the numbers. So because of the amount, most of the cases are against women and the, uh, the perpetrator is a man, okay? I've done a course based in this country, okay, based in Scotland, and I've spoken to police officers, to all the real people who actually do the work and know loads more than uh, you and I, right? Um, When you look at the figures, I was really, really surprised because I thought myself that the UK is a very equal country. And that must be because I compare it to my own country and I can see the differences and I can see how much better it is in terms of gender equality okay when i saw the numbers which i can i can forward you the report i can show you uh the the things that i've uh collected the data that i collected so going back one going back to the example you were saying you're giving i will go to a job interview let's i don't want to be personal a woman We'll go to a job interview, right? And you're saying the chances you'll get discriminated for being for being a woman a, a woman is are ridiculously low, right? What I'm saying is, yes, maybe you are right. She'll still get the job, but her chances of suffering, for example, an a, an incident of gender violence are ten times or twenty times higher than the man's. Sorry, so. My thoughts on this, my thought, <laughs> I'm trying to stop myself our uh, normal conversation going, yeah, but you're bloody wrong. No. I know. <laughs> it's fun. My thoughts on this are this. My thoughts on this and this, right? Uh, go back to the um, violence, uh, gender violence, and it's predominantly men against women. And they're going back to people. Uh, w- so you were saying that women in the workplace are more likely to be assaulted than men in the workplace, right? Just as an example. I didn't say in the workplace, anywhere. You said because you were given the example of the interview. It's just let's anywhere. Go, let, let's go. Let's go to the. Um, let's go to the gender violence um, thing. You can get. We could get to a perfectly equal world. We could be a perfectly equal UK. We look at the female sex as equal as we look at the male sex. Mm-hmm. So we. I mean, the royal we men. Okay, I can guarantee you that gender violence would still be higher against women. And two reasons. One, because men, okay, we are predominantly 
uh, more uh, a more violent the more violent uh, sex and I don't know whether you sex or gender. We're the more violent one out of the two of us, men and women. Okay, so we're more violent to in, we're more likely to enact violence. Now, regardless of who at the minute, men or women, we're more likely to enact violence than a woman is. So we're going to conduct more violence. That straight away puts the puts the um, puts the numbers to the roof. And the second thing is, okay, we if we are the kind of person who's going to con conduct a violent act, like which is again uh, conduct a violent act sort of unfounded it's not like a yeah you know, not like uh, which isn't sort of trying to save your bloody life i don't know uh, analogize it okay it's going to be because of mental issues or, or, or mental health thing okay i'm not saying mental health a mental illness right it's going to be a, of a mental thing okay and it's going to be on someone who's probably close to you it's also going to be on someone who you don't pick a fight with someone you, who you think you're going to lose against exactly right and so who, who, how, how, what proportion of the UK are heterosexual? The majority of the UK are heterosexual. The majority of men are shacked up with women. And so the majority of men, if they all want to turn to psycho. So you're just saying any, it's would, a demographic have. issue. No, 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 no. No, it's no, not no, a gender no. issue. No, I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not saying the numbers are wrong. What I'm saying is that that gender violence. Okay, men against women is not because of uh, because of uh, we see women as like that they're, they're less valid in society. And we should target them broadly speaking. I'm saying it's just a, a you were on about a numbers game earlier. It's just a, it is a numbers game. Men are more likely to be violent than women, so men are going to conduct more of the violent crimes. That numbers so the number of uh, uh, violence uh, the the number of, the amount of violent acts conducted men compared to women is going to be men higher and it's going to be predominantly against women now what's interesting here is would be to see is if we could see the number of violent acts regardless of sex okay so number of violent acts regardless of sex let's say they're really low number because my maths a thousand or a hundred percent right so you got all we know all of the violent acts all of the violent acts okay i'd argue that although uh I'll argue without evidence that although um, it's more likely that a man will uh, be violent against a woman, actually the proportion of violent acts, the percentage of violent acts that are men against women is much less than it is men against men. I mean, I don't know. Again, we don't have we don't have the data, right? We don't have the evidence. We don't have numbers here either. Um, we're just talking, but. I strongly disagree with everything you just said. Okay. Um, yeah, it's fine. Go, go for it. No, no, I'm it's not. I'm Googling violent crime, crime statistics while you uh, <laughs> one, okay. I'm looking for one that's in favor of me. And if there's not one, I'm going to create a page. <laughs> yeah. Well, the one I was, the one I'm referring to is in um, the, what's the name? But you were saying that more men, the point you were making is that more men assault women than women assault men, mm -hmm. right? Well, obviously. Yeah, but you were also talking about um, something that to you is obvious, that you were saying that we, we you meant men, are more violent. I don't agree with that. So if we look at your own um, life story, right? You could say you are a person who uh, has your job, right? You've been trained in different things and you've seen, um, basically, you were in the army, basically, right? So you could say that you are, <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to say it in a politically correct way, but what I was wanting to say. I'm not saying that in the army are violent. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that they interact with violence much more than an, a, a common civilian. Okay, I can mention some men who are not violent at all, right? From my friends, from my family, from loads of places. So I think what you're saying there is absolutely not true. That men have been associated to violence more than women. It's not 
essential to men. It's not because you have a penis, you're going to be more violent. It's a cultural construct. So it's all the same. Does that make any sense? Uh, it makes sense what you're saying. However, so if, um, if, if, uh, I, so our sort of masculinity then is a social construct. Yeah. It's not, it, see, I disagree. If our masculinity did not exist in the way it does now, sorry, no, 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 let me rephrase that. Going back to Homo sapien man, before that, Homo erectus, even before that, okay, it was an absolute necessity that the male looked after, protect, protected the female. Mm-hmm. Is that correct or not? I mean, maybe. I don't know. I don't know what you're basing yourself in. The the literature that I've read about or on indigenous peoples, the dynamics there were absolutely different, where the, the women and the men ha- were peers in no, the dynamics talking, of the tribe. You're talking about, you're, but you're talking here about indigenous people. You're not talking, I'm talking about ev- like indigenous people who exist now, right? And they've gone through their own evolution. In very, very different to when you talk about indigenous people, you're all know about people in the middle of nowhere, have like contact with anyone, they've not done any like evolution like we have. Obviously, there's some cities and societies, there's some tribe in some jungle or some island somewhere, right? Uh huh. Well, they're what the are exception. you on about? Well, they're the exception to the human race, the way we have evolved. They're completely the exception. The majority of the human race has evolved the way you and I are now. And the way the UK is, and America, and America is, and 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 uh, all the other developed countries in the world, okay. Um, the the reason, the reason that men are, are generally bigger, physically bigger than women, is because of that physical necessity, that capacity for violence if needed. Granted, the majority of people I know aren't violent, just like yourself. It doesn't mean we haven't got the capacity for it. Oh, of course. Have, and if I have a stressful day at work and I have a little breakdown and I'm a bit of a screw loose and perhaps I don't quite, uh, I don't quite uh, hold the same values and standards as as Hugh Keir next door. Then when I come in from home, I'm going to lose. I'm going to lose the will to live. I might lose an argument with the missus. And I might batter her. I'm not saying I would do that because I'm next door. I'm Hugh Keir next door. Okay, easy target. If I'm in the shop and I, I, I lose my shit, you go. You pick fights. You can win. That's the point with the with the the gender violence thing. Absolutely, yeah, but it's, it's true, not it's always a true statistic. It is the thing not is, true. The thing is, you are only referring, for example, to physical violence. Okay. So you have this idea in your mind that men are stronger than women, which in many cases they are. Right? They have bigger fibers in their bodies. Right? But there is no conclusive or direct research that proves that having bigger always make you stronger. That's one of the um, having, having that's one of the what? arguments they having bigger what? Sorry, fibers in your body. Oh, okay, fibers. Yeah, um, probably not saying it right. Um, no, no, they, they broke up when you were talking. Sorry. Anyways, you are thinking about physical violence only. So you're saying in that idea of I'm going to pick a fight with someone I can win, the woman is going to be weaker than me. And I absolutely agree. That's how people think. But there's other types, gender violence and violence against women, which is not physical. So symbolic, symbolic, emotional, um, why is that violence? Because it still messes with you. It still creates um, pain. It still hurts you. So if you have someone um, emotionally abusing you for a certain period, it doesn't need to be a, a physical uh, toll. It doesn't need to be bruises or breaking your your wrist or whatever. It can be emotional as well. It can be mental as well. 
there's also within within violence against women there's also the factor of economic factors <laughs> to the idea that they can also be um Um, situation, especially in the case that, to your mind, would be the ideal case where the woman is a stay-at-home mom, right? So imagine that you are a stay-at-home mom and you've got three beautiful children and you're very, very thin and weak, don't work out at all, right? Can barely manage to pick up your glass, right? And you've got a strong man who's your husband. So imagine this strong man is, I don't know, cheating on you or whatever it is. You are trying to break up with him. The economic factor, the fact that you depend on him economically is also going to affect uh, the relationship. And again, your opportunity, the chance for you to break away from that. So there's a billion things to take yeah, into those, consideration. But those are, but those, those, are, those are just those are just life circumstances, and you could yeah. pin that. You, you, but you could pin the blame for that to anything you wanted. If you wanted to turn around, so if I'm that oppressed, I'm not oppressed. If I'm that stay-at-home wife, the gaps of the kids, and my husband's at work, I could pin that thing on anything I wanted. I could pin it on the way I was brought up. I could pin it on the, the location I was brought up. I could pin it on the location I live in. I could pin it on the location my husband was brought up, or boyfriend or whatever. Yeah, I could pin it off wherever I want, not just gender. It's, it's, it's not the case. It's like the thing is. It's like it's a whole a whole package of things going in to put us where we are now. Yeah. I'm here now because I grew up on the farm at Tila. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one of the factors. It played a part in why I'm here now, but it's not the thing. I am not hosting a podcast and probably most podcast hosters are male i'm gonna throw that out there i'm gonna pretty much guarantee it yeah. pretty much guarantee it okay and that's not and, and so i'm not hosting the podcast because i'm male and the reason i say that is probably i uh, probably most podcast hosts are on, on, entrepreneurial and most entrepreneurial people are men <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and that, no, that's a, and how, a why is that? And why is that? But so, right? But you, but you laugh it. So that's not me saying men are better than women. Now, absolutely, absolutely correct in what you're saying. Why are men more entrepreneurial? And that is a product of history, in terms of the way history's developed, gone from yes. being and society and culture. I yes. agree. I can. I am. I listen. I completely agree. I'm not saying women aren't it entrepreneurial. I am absolutely not. Men, we we do absolutely. This is the situation we live in now in the first world. Men generally, I think, have it better than women. Absolutely agree. I absolutely agree. Unfortunately, there are things you cannot change. You can't do it. Things you can, things you cannot change. Just the way we evolved. Jesus Christ. Okay, that's that's an interesting point because earlier when you were asking Why can't I reproduce? Why am I not allowed to reproduce? Oh my god. You're like, oh, it's you're like... <laughs> Man. Why are you so random? No, I'm not random. It's a it's a point I'm making. The feeling that a woman must get when they give birth to a child. Must be unbelievable. Everyone knows that mother's know. bond. Oh, the mother's bond with a child. Flip a neck. Men could throw their cherries and cherries at the pram for that. Oh, the mother's bond. Oh, men's got just a stronger bond. Negative goes right there. Men. But that's bother. another. Uh, that's to me is another construction. Maternity is another construction. A hundred percent. But no. But what? Maternity is another construction. Can we talk about that? That maternity, that the mother's <laughs> bond, and all that you're talking about, I don't believe in any of it. You don't think that a mother has a stronger bond than a child? No. Other than the father than the father? No. I mean, they do carry it in their bodies. So if you're talking about a physical bond, but the physical affects the emotional. The physical yeah. affects the emotional. Sometimes, sometimes it doesn't.
Sorry, I we're never, you are, never going you to are, agree. You are evil. No, I just think it's a good idea. Go back to what I was, what I was going to say before you started shouting. Why can't I have babies? <laughs> so you were saying, um, you were saying, why or when will we know when we have achieved that? objective of getting rid of racism or whatever and you were saying why are we always looking at this by looking at this we are reinforcing the notion that's what you were saying earlier and i no, think no 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 uh, can i just clarify yeah uh, so it's not about um when have we got rid of it it's not gonna be possible to get rid of it because it's discrimination right it's not gonna yeah. be possible you're gonna have your elements at an individual level i think there's a few things to it you need to decide how far down the the sort of social scale you want to get to 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 eradicate it before you realize okay there's nothing you do to to like to control it at this level individual mm -hmm. in house level for example um, that'll probably be that would probably if we look at it seriously be be dictated by what in realistic terms are we able to measure it's not practical to like monitor every single person in the UK for levels of racism okay so so therefore it's not possible to go down to that level of, of uh, implementation of a lack of of uh, getting rid of racism a point i think what i'm saying is if it was me <laughs> in an ideal world and it was like hugh you want to get rid of racism in the uk mm -hmm. um okay it'd be that's not it's not going to be possible to measure when that's achieved because what I just said, you can't go down and, met, and judge people at the individual level, get in the heads, understand it. Um, it is it is possible to measure it at certain like council levels and on a on a, a very loose loose way uh, through crime statistics like race crime statistics through. Um, obs public observations of people. But the thing is, surveys. I don't think uh, I but, don't think those are lose ways. But, no, but so so my 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 suggestion would be: what can you measure? How can you measure it? And what and what are those levels now? What are the levels of racism now? Okay, there's two percent of violent crimes in London are are race crimes. And uh, twenty percent of uh, of, um, of employees uh, conducting a national survey in in business uh, say that they feel um, discriminated against because of their race. Okay, where do we want to get to? What's achievable? Let's make that twenty percent, five percent. Let's make the two percent of crimes, violent crimes in London, one percent. That's what we're aiming for. We get that stage, you can't do any more. For example. You need to have a. You need, gotta have targets. When do we stop? So I think, again, I think this is very you. <laughs> this is very you. We need the targets. <laughs> I need a time frame, <laughs> a detailed you know plan. Exactly, that's you. Exactly, that is you. <laughs> I mean, that is not how life works. That is not how well, societies work. I tell you what. I, I tell you what. Let's set a target and not know when we've achieved it. And let's waste a shed ton of effort, time, effort, resources, money. I don't think it's wasted. This is what's happened in America. It absolutely has. It absolutely has. With the racism in America, it's absolutely what's happened in America. How yeah. have they? How you have they wasted it? If there's an interaction between a black person and a white person, for the most case, it's a. Uh, you know the term. They oh they did the, they pulled the race card. It was happening years ago. And when I say they, I'm not talking about black people. I'm just talking race. Okay, it doesn't matter who we talk about either yeah. way. It's in, in the same in the same uh, light of uh, as gender. You need to know when you need to start dialing it down, because it becomes a different kind of problem, a different beast. Like I said earlier, I think and so. it helps no one apart from the media. I think exactly. I think it has become a different kind of beast because of the media because of those isolated cases that have been in the mainstream and the ones that probably get 
or get to most people first and actually get to them in the sense that bother them, you know? And I think the, the main reason is because you are a white male who has not himself been through it. So your reality would be very different if you weren't um, white male. It's the same, you were talking about rape earlier when we were talking about gender violence. And one of the biggest things when it comes to rape is false accusations. So what you were, what you would say, what you would call a different kind of beast. So false accusations, again, I can't give you the exact number because number because I have that, but we when I look at the data collected country in this um yeah, here where I live, um, the number of false accusations was like zero comma something, like literally nothing in comparison, right, to all Wait, the other accusations. Say that again. Sorry, you broke up a bit there. Comparing who to who? The number, the actual numbers here, the data that I was um, studying in this course, um, the number of false accusations, literally zero comma it's it's almost nothing but if you look at the different kind of beast you're referring this is all we get in the media or mostly what we get if there is one false accusation in the globe it would go around the globe all over the place and everyone would be like oh my god that lassie uh, ruined that man's life how can you say something like that uh, so I think that's... it's the same. It, it's com it's to compare it to what you're saying about uh, race. I think. Yeah, but, but the outrage there is not because of the the. It's not because of um, the outrage. Yeah, is not caused by the false accusation of rape. It's caused by the fact that the guy was allowed to be named and accused. It's not like that. That's that problem. I mean, it's a the, the, the different thing. The, the problem with the false accusation of rape is the, flip, the flipping accused gets named. Yeah. Victims That's get the named all that. the time. It's not around gender. That's the problem with that. Mm. I, know, I know a bloke who got raped by a woman. Yeah, it does happen. Yeah, I don't know why you're different. smiling. Because each, you're like, I've got an example. <laughs> I've got an example. Yeah. Because, uh, because uh, it's a, <laughs> because it's uh, it's one of those you go what? <laughs> People go. Oh my God! Is that how, how you reacted? How did a man get raped by a woman? And plus, yeah, but it is that to us, not us. To him, like he didn't file a police report. He didn't file a, uh, a and why not? And the reason he didn't is because. I don't know, I'm speculating, and he was a military guy, yeah, and the reason he did is because he didn't feel threatened. It wasn't like a, you know, unless he got given an STD, I don't know if he did. You know, that would be a different kettle of fish, but he wouldn't know until that, like weeks later anyway after the test. But he, you know, he didn't feel threatened. It was like a, a and, and, and sex is a different thing for men and women to when it means different well, things for men and women. Bloody hell. Well, this is be. like never ending. I thought we'll be approaching some kind of conclusion by now. Even if, even if you don't hear, I'm going to tell a story because people are thinking, "What? Some dude got raped?" Yeah, I know. You're a dude, right with you telling his story. Let me tell his story. It's not for your benefit. You, you can be a, you can be a listener for the minute. But did you ask uh, for his consent? What? Is he okay with you telling this story? Oh, I'm not going to name him. Right. Okay. Fuck it. So this happened in uh, this happened in Derry and Lanes in Brecon, which is uh, the home of the Infantry Battle School. I'm not going to get the military police talking about in the morning or the police. Uh, years ago, a long time ago. Long story short, there is a shop on camp. There are there were civilians manning that shop. Uh, they were ladies, and uh, they were. Um, how do we describe it? They they like to they like to socially interact 
contact with people. Oh my God. Them. I know what you were going to say. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, guy comes back, goes to bed uh, above in the flat above the shop. I believe in the flat above the shop, I believe. And um, he, he fell asleep drunk. They may have interacted before he fell asleep. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, he woke he woke up next morning uh, with a, a common male physical situation going on. Yeah, uh, he he was not flaccid. Mm-hmm. Morning, morning glory, <laughs> and to find her uh, engaging him in sex, he was asleep. He woke up. Right, we got it. It's fine. We don't need a picture. It's fine. Yeah. Right. Amusing story. How did we go into that? God knows. Um, I don't think I don't think I'm convinced that uh, gender is a social construct. Well, I, I, I was gonna say that, that this. I was gonna say if I can get two seconds, I was gonna say that this. <laughs> <laughs> this construction of gender, right? This gender construct and this gender discourse. Dominant discourse we all buy affects both men and women. That's what I was gonna say. That's what I was. That's what I am all about. We ended up talking about females, and we ended up talking about inequality for females because of the way the conversation went, right? But when we talk about, for example, queer theory, right, or queer in reality, or gender fluidity. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get rid of those dominant discourses that affect men as much as they affect women. So you were saying, for example, for example the garden is something like keep reinforcing obvious, obvious reasons. So that idea, and we're seeing it more and more uh, due to numbers in cases of suicide, male suicide, right? And mental health and the question of speaking and the question that men can also speak, men can also cry, men can also uh, struggle, right? The construction of gender, the construction of heteropatriarchy affects and harms both male and female in the same way, I would say, but has had historically different effects on women. But when we're talking about inequality, we're not talking about a gender pay gap. We're not talking only about that. That's one you're example. Not, you're not, more I'm on. not. No, when I say we, this is the collective we that you use, you know, at university. We means me. <laughs> no one else. It's just me. But it sounds better if we, if I say we, right? instead of just this crazy person. No, it's absolutely my own opinion uh, based on a lot of study, right? Not on what, on some, on things I saw on social media or watched on the telly. Uh, but it's, it's, it's good that you made that final point or that, that, that example about a man um, not feeling that he could speak about this or report it because it would ref- reflect badly on his masculinity. So... I think because of this uh, movement or whatever you want to call it about paying more attention to this and explaining to men that they can also speak about their feelings is a very good example to show how the patriarchy or heteropatriarchy or the main ideologies around gender harm both men and women. And we should get rid of them. And that's what gender fluidity tries you to do. You say that. You say that. I mean, look, we we you made a good you made a good uh, you, you mentioned something at the start, right at the start of the podcast about the the use of the word natural. Mm. Um, and what is natural? And so, uh, my my opinion, I've got a, I've got a point of this. There is relevance to what I'm saying here. Probably uh-huh. I'll find it. <laughs> I'll invent it. Is that um? To me, nature is what we are now. What we're doing now, nature is everything from the nuclear bomb to um. Yeah, but for know, more, to for a, to a flower, for those, going, right? But for, go, on, to, go on. 
For loads of people, nature is God. Creationism is nature. Well, exactly, but who says that you're right and they're not? I mean, 100%. I, I don't believe in creationism. But when we talk about nature and biology and essence and goodness and badness, it's very dangerous territory. You're walking into very dangerous uh, territory, very dangerous terms that have been used to because of what I just said. So if you think about going back to Foucault, he writes the, the history of sexuality. He um, analyzes how homosexuality was um, constructed as a perversion, right? Back in, um, there's this seminal work called um, Psychopathia Sexualis by Psychopathic Exiles. Schwalis. I'll send you I'll send you a list of references because it's all words, all names that are literally impossible to. But in this, um, it's basically a German psychi psychi psychiatrist who wrote a seminal work on um, sexual pathology. Published in eighteen. 85, if I'm not mistaken. So that's the first book where there's a doctor writing down in a book saying, if you're a homosexual, you're sick. It's a pathology, it's a perversion, there's something wrong with your psyche, there's something wrong with everything. So people have been killed, persecuted, um, segregated because of their sexual identity, their gender identity, or whatever you want to call it. So that's what I mean when I say, and people are still getting persecuted for it today. It's still illegal to be homosexual in many countries in the world. So that's what I mean when, when we say, when I say it's dangerous to use those terms, I'm saying be careful because you're talking to me and I understand where you're coming from and I know you, but other people who listen to this might not understand what you're trying to say or might not, might not know where you're coming from. Well, that's interpretation, I live. And, and that's, uh, that, that, I mean, that's interpretation. You? And that's, uh, it, and if I will say what I want to say and if people don't understand it, I'll take it offensively. Oh, absolutely. I don't, I don't, I don't mean offence. But don't Absolutely. come back to that my door to change to what I'm saying. Um, you you need you either like listen again and interpret it a different way, or not like it and fuck off. Absolutely, I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm saying it's 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 a good exercise to reflect upon the meaning of words. That's all I'm saying, and I know that's something you are not a fan of either. The fact that words <laughs> words what? do. You know, words do have meaning and words do have an impact on people and words can be hurtful, right? Where, you, where would you, why would you think I don't, I don't believe that? Of course I believe that. Many, many examples are not appropriate for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> can't, can't, can't say. Brilliant. Brilliant. No. Um... We, have this, we need to continue this conversation, I think. We need to start wrapping it up, but we do need to continue the conversation, definitely. I'm going to send you, so I'm going to send you a list, okay, with some things that I think you should read. Yeah, do that. Do that. I'll, do that. I'll post them out as well. And um, no, let's do it again. I, I'm like, it is a, I have, you know, there's cert, certain things around I have strong feelings around. Doesn't mean, it doesn't mean I don't understand that I don't have all the information. I have very little of it. I'm not opposed to changing my, my viewpoint on it. No, um, but can I just say something? The impression I get when I speak to you is... I'm awesome. You're, I'm awesome. You're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I Hunt for me. Protect me from <laughs> bears and fucking wolves. <laughs> no. No, no, no. The feeling I get is you are, I'm not saying you're, you're not, you are open-minded, right? And it's great for you, you're not, but I feel 
like everything I say, you discard with a counter argument that only stems from your brain. So I think if you re-watch this or you listen to this again, you will see that all your counter arguments come from your mind, from where something your, you... Where, your, where do yours come from? Well, they're based thing. on they're based on the roots of study they're based, yeah, they're based, and yeah, reading they're, they're based on your experiences mine are based on my experiences yeah, my exactly. experience my experiences in this in these areas are much 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 less than yours much less than yours and probably restricted of course to a couple of, of google course. searches and some social media that's it um, no, I, I understand that, but 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 um, it doesn't, it doesn't mean mine is more valid than yours. No, it's just no. I'm not saying that. I don't want to say that at all. What I want to say is, it's a good exercise again to pause for a minute and go right. Where did I get that from? You are mistaking this for a debate where I want to win and you want to win. It's not the case. I I no, fuck I, off! I, I'm not. Don't I tell me what I. I <laughs> I, I have an understanding of things. This is my my opinion on things. I acknowledge I acknowledge that you are much more more experienced in this these areas than I am. So that's the conversation. I really fucking enjoyed it. We should do it. definitely do it again. Did you enjoy it? Yes. Because you, you had a beer. Well, yeah, finished it. Yeah. <laughs> Where can yeah, I didn't mean I didn't mean to sound condescending. I didn't mean to say you need to read to speak about this or to know about this. No, I'm sure um, a doctor can watch this conversation and think I'm full of shite and think I'm right, I'm wrong. And she or he can speak to me and and tell me all the things that I've gotten wrong in this conversation. Do you know what I mean? I'm saying it's a good idea to always think about where our beliefs and where our ideas come from where did we get them so just to, just to think um if we want to keep them or if we want to modify them no cool no good good cool. conversation um where can people find you online what <laughs> nowhere where can, where can people find you online nowhere i'm not online there you are I'm not well for my very close. I'm going to tag you anyway. So, what, how can, if people want to follow you because they go, Oh, I live, she talks some sense. Where no. can people find you? They can't. I'm sorry. Are you serious? Why would someone want to follow me? Can I link your, uh, can I link your LinkedIn profile on when I post it? Uh, my work, uh, that says where I work. I'm going to tag you in it all anyway. I live, right. I still have to authorize it for it to show. So don't be so. I'm gonna right. tag you. Be careful of all the uh, all the men. They might want to enact violence on you. I will. I'm always looking out. <laughs> Just... Thank you very much. Right. Bye. 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 <laughs>